should I obey when they tell me to fight? Arming up the world with their guns and tanks. Power for the Pentagon and money for the banks. Now this, this talk I made is titled in, in International Report. Basically look at what's happening in the world. The world. Um, and with a bit of a, I suppose, a historical um, inclination. What I thought I'd try to do in this talk is cover basically three things. Um, first of all, um, to look at what I think is um, the framework really for revolutionary Marxists in what we can only hope may in the future be denoted as a, as a new epoch, maybe, the epoch of the decline of late, cap of late capitalism. Wait, let's wait and see on that. But I think there is a relatively clear um, fundamental framework for revolutionary Marxists in this period or epoch to come. We could call it the restatement of historical materialism, uh, maybe even the reconstitution of historical materialism. And that's not only because of the sort of crises, economic and ecological and otherwise, social, etc., of capitalism and their certain culminations in recent years, but just as much, if not more so, because of the, the, cir the circle of the, the political struggles that we have gone through, or the politics that we've gone through in the last um, decade, well, sorry, in the last century or more, actually, I'll come back to that. I think it's, that, that's the first thing I'm going to talk about, the restatement, or rest, um, the restatement of historical materialism. Secondly, I want to talk about the growing crises of capitalism um, in relation to what we could call the overripe or overdetermined contradictions of the system. So that's going to deal with both the economic developments um, recently, but also to some extent the ecology and how that fits fits in. Um, and thirdly, I want to um, try to deal with what I suppose pertains to us most immediately and practically, and that's socialism itself and the actuality of revolution, the possibility of revolution. Um, so that's the three things I hope to try to cover in this talk. Um, the restatement of historical materialism. Well, in a way, it's about saying something which seems so obvious to Marxists, but certainly lost in intellectual circles in general, and that is that people make history. It's not like this has even been lost on a lot of the left. The fundamental precept of historical materialism: people do make history, albeit in conditions not determined uh, by themselves, or in circumstances other than they may have determined. But they do make history. Um, a corollary of this is that human emancipation is possible. Not just change, but human emancipation. Again, it seems like a sort of obvious, maybe even utopian point to make, but it's something that may, maybe hasn't been lost, but certainly has been pushed down the agenda of the discussions and the discourse of the left. The idea that human emancipation is possible, i.e. that humans can run their own lives, their own society. Not just tinker at the edges of an economy that's all powerful and overwhelming people and their decisions, but that, in fact, we can take over or control that economy and, and, and to some extent or another at least make the fundamental decisions about our relationship with the environment economically and, and in terms of the natural environment. Another way of looking at this is to restate the fact that Marx's epistemology, our way of looking at things or understanding knowledge, is based on class, on a class point of view. For those of you who might have read a bit of the philosopher Sisek, he puts this a bit sort of convoluted because you know, he's an intellectual, but nevertheless, probably puts it correctly when he says, we have to regain the idea that truth is one-sided. It is one-sided. There is a truth for the working class, which is different to the truth for the ruling class. Um, in other words, in more general terms, Marx's epistemology is based on class, on a class point of view. This is quite important in terms of the relationship, historic relationship between revolutionary Marxism and reformist currents in our movement. If you look back to the classic social democratic break from Marxism, that is, inside the Social Democratic Party of Germany, 
Of course, that break was first and foremost based on the economic development that was happening in that country and the political corruption that ensued as a result amongst the working classes, the labour aristocracy, the labour bureaucracy, their takeover of the SPD, etc., etc. Basic history that most comrades are aware of. But somewhere along the line of that break, that materialist break, there also occurred a break in philosophy. Bernstein moved from the philosophy of Marx to the philosophy of Kant. What does it actually mean for us practically? It means something very real in practical terms. He moved from the idea of the necessity and possibility of revolution, sorry, from the possibility of revolution, which is a materialist, a dialectic materialist, or historical materialist concept. He moved from that to an ethical stance on socialism. The idea that socialism would be good, it'd be a much nicer place to live, but we're not really sure if it's possible. Um, that was an important break as, that was part of that development of reformism, and if you like, sealed it. Um, that's part of our, if you like, framework, I think, in the new period. Given that whole crisis of the left, especially the Marxist left in the last, um, well, since 89 in particular, but really dating back to the corruption of the Soviet Revolution under Stalin, to restate that basic historical materialist precept. That revolution is not only a necessity, that is an ethical question, which the reformists, even today's modern reformists, can agree with. The average Green believes in that, and we're not called socialism, but in the ethical um, basis for a new, more or less social society, collectivist, etc., etc. Um, but what, if you like, divided out, not in a negative way, Distinguished is a better term. What distinguished the revolutionary Marxist movement was our understanding of its historical possibility, the historical possibility of socialism. Um, and this is coming back into the debates. I'll come back to this later in the more advanced sections of our movement or of our struggle internationally. And certainly, it's something the Cubans are pondering about and talking about in Latin America. Now, there's another sort of, I suppose, grand reason you can think about the importance of this restatement of historical materialism. In a certain way, capitalism has finally achieved its historical mission. For the first time in, give or take, a few years, 250 years, capitalism has actually achieved a global system, entire global system of generalised commodity production, albeit in the economy, a little economy here or there. Um, there is no... Um, Soviet bloc, where the labor world value is somehow mitigated against by planning and hence has an effect too on the world economy and how it functions, the capitalist world economy. We have, I suppose, the closest thing to a world capitalist system, the historic mission, generalized commodity production um, from end to end. Um, it's not just about measuring that in terms of countries that are capitalist, but the deep penetration of commodity um, production into all economies and you know all of us sort of come across examples of this and you know even the mundane examples of coca-cola being sold in the highlands of new guinea etc etc but this is deep penetration thorough as close as we'll probably ever get we can hope we can only hope to complete generalized commodity production on a global scale um, now this is interesting because if looking at it historically we've arrived at a certain, let's call it a certain final point, want a better term, of capitalism. And we have, couldn't be further away from the catch cries of the bourgeois revolutions. Equality, liberty, fraternity. We couldn't be further away now. And that's having achieved, if you like, the historic mission of capitalism. Capitalizing the entire world economy. Where have we got, if we look at these catch cries of, of the bourgeois revolutions, where have we got with equality? Well, a lot of this stuff people have heard before, but it's worth recalling. 